Gold hitting another new record high. Well, is it too late for you to get in at, uh, what is it, it was close to $1,050 earlier today. Let's ask Peter Schiff, President and Chief Market Global Strategist for Euro Pacific Capital, author of Crash Proof 2.0. Uh, Peter, I guess you're having a terrific a banner year, if, if I could put it that way. What, but what happens specifically to our economy as gold continues to rise? I think you say up to 5000 an ounce. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's definitely not too late to buy it. You know, don't wait for Crash Proof 3.0 right? you know, to buy gold. You know, the fact that given all that's happened and all that's likely to happen, the fact that gold is still this close to 1,000, uh, I think it's a great bargain. So people should, should definitely be buying. But, you know, the fact that gold is going up is a reflection of inflation, not just in America. Right? You mentioned earlier, why is gold up even though the dollar isn't down? Right. Well, that means that the euro is down or the Chinese RMB is down or the yen. Everybody is creating inflation. Everybody's printing too much money. They got interest rates too low. So gold's going to go up. But I think gold will go up more versus the dollar than most other countries because we are creating even more inflation and acting even more recklessly. Okay. Not only do you watch gold, but you watch a lot of foreign currencies. So just as the dollar goes down, which Asian currency or foreign currency reigns supreme? Well, look, I, I think I, I, I mentioned recently I like the Japanese yen quite a bit. I think that's been my favorite currency technically. But, you know, just yesterday, not only did the Japanese yen make a 52-week high, but the Canadian dollar made a 52-week high. The Australian dollar made a 52-week high. Uh, the European currencies were lagging a little bit. They haven't made new 52-week highs yet, but I think they will. And ultimately, I think the greatest currencies are going to be some of the currencies that aren't even moving now, like the Chinese RMB, because they're currently kind of pegged to the dollar. Uh, but ultimately, the Chinese are going to let the dollar collapse, and those currencies, I think, have a lot of, uh, of, of built-up, pent-up demand that, once unleashed, will send them much, much higher. Well, if, if all this happens and the dollar crashes big time, what, what do the Chinese do with all their treasuries? They take a loss, you know, like everybody else, you know. But the other question is, what do they do with all their RMB? They use those to buy things because they're going to gain value. The Chinese are going to be much better off with a weaker dollar because that gives them an edge in the global market to buy stuff. And, you know, the box that we're in right now, and this is the big predicament for the Fed and the government, if they want to artificially prop up the real estate market, keep the stock market going up, and kind of soften the recession, they have to keep interest rates at practically nothing and let the dollar collapse and inflation run out of control. If they want to do something to, to put a floor beneath the dollar and, they, and raise interest rates aggressively, then they're going to kill the real estate market, kill the stock market, and cause a much worse recession okay. than anything we experienced so far. So they're in this big box. And the actual, actuality is the best thing they can do is raise interest rates and take this recession and let the stock market come down, let the real estate market come down, because if they don't do that, the hyperinflation that they're going to create is actually going to be much worse. You've been awfully critical of Ben Bernanke. I want to give a quote here that you recently said. You said, Ben Bernanke's keeping his record of perfection intact, of never getting anything right. Oh, Peter, <laughs> is that not a little harsh considering the efforts that he and Hank Paulson and, and now Tim Geithner have taken have at least helped the panic and fear subside from this market? Well, when I said he never got anything right, it was with his economic forecast, which have been consistently wrong. But, you know, yes, I, I will agree that what he did alleviated some short-term pain, but at the expense of much greater long-term pain. And I don't like trading the short-term gain for the long-term pain. I think he would be a much better central banker if he did the right thing, if he took the punch ball away and allowed us... Uh, to really have a real recession so that we can have a real recovery. Mm -hmm. Until we, we resolve these imbalances and, and, and restore you know, a balance in our economy and stability to our currency, we're in serious, serious trouble. Right, well, Peter, and he is not doing us any favors. Let's talk about cash because you did have a good year and you do have some specific picks for those who believe your philosophy. What are they, particularly in the mining field? Yeah, yes, you know, I've, I've, I came up with three mining stocks that your viewers probably never heard of, but they're pretty easy to buy. One of them is Redback Mining, which uh, is a gold stock. You can trade it up in Canada, uh, symbol RBI in Toronto. Also, Capstone Mining, also in Toronto, CS, which is a base metal company that buys, they own copper, zinc, some silver. And one that trades here in the United States is Silver Corp Metals, uh, symbol is SVM. That actually trades here on the U.S. market. They've got mines over in China. Uh, so I think these are very interesting uh, companies that your viewers probably don't know about, and they can still buy them. Peter, good to see you. Thank you very much.